Regarded as the first billionaire in the world in nominal terms, Rockefeller created one of the most dominant monopolies in the world in the form of his oil company Standard Oil. Calculating his wealth as a percentage of the US GDP at the time of his death in 1937, John D. Rockefeller was the wealthiest businessman in the history of the world, with an estimated wealth of around $400 billion in today's dollar value. Elon Musk's all-time highest net worth of $340 billion in September 2021 and Jeff Bezos's net worth of $210 billion pales in comparison to Rockefeller's business empire. However, it may come as a surprise to you that the wealthiest person in the world was a bully who built his empire by intimidating his competitors into submission. To understand this better, let's first take a look at Rockefeller's early life and how he entered the oil industry. Rockefeller came from humble beginnings. His father was a drifter and a swindler who sold so-called magical potions to dupe his customers. Due to the lack of financial stability, John had to work odd jobs for his neighbors from a very young age to support his family. He had to stop his education by the age of 16 to earn a more stable income when he started working as a bookkeeper for a local business earning an hourly wage of just 50 cents. John D. Rockefeller was nothing if not an ambitious man. He'd set himself a target of earning $100,000. Seeing limited career growth working as a bookkeeper, he decided to quit his job by the age of 18 and start his very first business, a trading company that dealt in commodities like meat, grains, poultry, and hay. He had built a reputation as a smart and dependable young man, which allowed him to raise around $4,000 as seed capital for his business. John D. Rockefeller's first venture was a success, with the company making almost half a million dollars in its first year of operations. As Rockefeller was climbing in the business world, he was saving money and looking for business opportunities to multiply his wealth. He got the perfect opportunity with the discovery of an oil well in 1859 during the Philadelphia oil rush. Most of the people who wanted to make money during the Philadelphia oil rush were drilling the oil. But Rockefeller's business strategy was geared towards refining the crude oil drilled by others. So, in 1863, Rockefeller joined forces with Samuel Andrews, a chemist who used to frequent his church. He opened his first oil refinery with the money he had earned in the last five years from his first business. Back then, the most important product of oil was the kerosene, which was separated from the crude oil. As there were no cars or vehicles at the time, gasoline was not in high demand, but kerosene lamps could be found in every household and were used to light the houses. Fate was on John's side as he soon met a wealthy investor by the name of Henry Flagler. The three partners then joined forces and founded Rockefeller, Andrews, and Flagler. John D. Rockefeller then put his sinister business strategy into action. They started buying out all of the smaller oil refineries that operated in the area around them. When any of the businessmen refused to sell their oil refineries, John would reduce the price of his oil even if it meant selling it at a loss. He would do this to attract all of the customers to his company in order to run these smaller companies to the ground. His negotiation tactics were quite similar to Pablo Escobar's Plata or Plomo strategy. Only Rockefeller didn't kill his rivals, but made them lose their businesses if they didn't agree to sell their refineries to him. By 1865, John D. Rockefeller had reached new heights of success. His company was worth roughly $1.2 million in today's dollar value. John had enough money in his pocket that he could move his staff to Manhattan. The irony? These people were the workers of the oil companies he had swallowed up. The owners of the oil companies he'd bullied into submission had also joined Standard Oil's board. This is how Rockefeller had brightest minds of the industry in his pockets. However, John D. Rockefeller's total dominance of the oil industry was not just because of his shady practices. John incentivized the chemists and engineers he'd employ to look for innovative ways to refine crude oil and ensured that they maximized the percentage of kerosene produced per barrel. He encouraged them to find innovative ways to use the byproducts that were previously treated as waste and thrown away by the other refiners. Before John came into the refining business, the yield per barrel would be around 50 to 60% kerosene, 10% gasoline, and 5 to 10% naphtha and benzene. The rest of the things were treated as waste and would not be sold or used by the refineries. John and his group of expert chemists ensured that there would be around 300 useful byproducts created in the distillation process of crude oil. 
These included paints, varnishes, tars used to pave roads, paraffin wax used to make candles, and dozens of varieties of lubricating oils used in factories and anesthetics. He either used these byproducts for reducing the cost of his own operations or sold them off to other industries for a profit. He was thus able to take the efficiency of his refinery from the industry average of 60% to more than 90%. In 1865, John D. Rockefeller took another step to achieve total domination of the oil industry by ensuring that he had the cheapest and most efficient way to transport oil. Railroads were the fastest and safest way to transport oil to big markets. Since backdoor deals were Rockefeller's speciality, he practiced them with the big boys of the railroad industry like Commodore Vanderbilt. John promised that he would ship 65 carloads of oil daily and would take care of all of the loading and unloading in return for the cheapest freight prices possible. His competitors were paying 300 to 400 percent more freight per barrel as compared to standard oil because of their smaller quantities or irregular supply. John D. Rockefeller never signed contracts for these backdoor deals. There was essentially no evidence that such deals had ever gone down. Are you enjoying this video? A like is all it takes to let us know. Subscribe to Business Absolute and press the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any more amazing case studies and business stories. So, John D. Rockefeller was successful in increasing the efficiency of his oil refinery through innovative scientific development along with cutting costs in transportation through the rebates he received. This allowed him to sell oil as low as 96 cents per barrel when his competitors like Cooper's were selling one barrel of oil for $2.5. While Rockefeller and Standard Oil were mining money and looking to acquire other refineries, their competitors were facing heavy losses because of the cutthroat pricing of oil by Standard Oil. Most of the oil refineries either shut shop or sold off their businesses to Standard Oil. Due to the immense growth of the company by 1870, Rockefeller, Andrews and Flagler was renamed to Standard Oil and changed from a partnership firm to a company. Standard Oil had acquired 23 out of 27 oil refineries in Cleveland, and his shady practices helped Standard Oil snowball and expand its reach through similar acquisitions across the country. Standard Oil refined over 90% of the country's oil by the 1870s. By the 1880s, Standard Oil had expanded into the drilling and retailing of oil by acquiring and investing in other businesses engaged in these activities. The unprecedented and uncontrolled success of John D. Rockefeller raised a few eyebrows. The business world grew worried that Standard Oil could easily disrupt the nation's economy with the power they wielded over the oil industry, which was growing in importance with the introduction of automobiles towards the end of the 19th century. The 1880s saw politicians, businessmen and media ruthlessly attacking John D. Rockefeller with the same ferocity with which John had built his business empire. Finally, in 1890, the American government passed the Sherman Antitrust Act, which significantly threatened Rockefeller's oil monopoly along with other monopolies in the country like American Tobacco's monopoly over the tobacco industry. The American government brought a lawsuit against Standard Oil in 1906 to break up the company. John D. Rockefeller had predicted that something like this was bound to happen. So, in 1882, he restructured his business empire in the form of a trust called Standard Oil Trust. The trust had nine trustees, including the four partners of Standard Oil, John D. Rockefeller, William Rockefeller, Samuel Andrews, and Henry M. Flagler. The sole purpose of the trust was to make it extremely challenging for anyone to break up his empire. The trust fully owned 14 different business entities in the oil industry and had a stake in 26 more companies. Because of this labyrinth-like structure of the organization, it took almost six years for the government to break up Standard Oil. It was common to see these individual companies merge with or acquire one another. Some of the popular oil companies are created from such interaction. For example, Standard Oil California acquired Standard Oil Kentucky to form what is now known as Chevron Oil. John and the other trustees retained their shares in the newly formed companies. Before the Supreme Court had split up Standard Oil Trust, John had already renounced most of his operational involvement. In the two decades leading up to the Supreme Court's decision, the company had paid out roughly $500 billion in dividends to the trustees. Do you think Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk or anyone else would be able to break John D. Rockefeller's record all-time high net worth? Let us know in the comments. Check out the description section below for bonus content and how you too can become a millionaire in the modern era. 
even though John D. Rockefeller was considered as a bully by his peers, he was one of the biggest philanthropists in history. He extended his support to the fields of education, research, and public health. Rockefeller gave away about $540 million during his 97-year life. The New York Post labeled him as the best giver in the world. After his retirement, John D. Rockefeller frequented the Union Baptist Church in St. Beach, Florida. He paid off the loan on the Fullerton Avenue Baptist Church one day before he died. His body was buried in Cleveland, where he started his career as a bookkeeper. You may have thought that John D. Rockefeller's only son, John Jr., received most of his father's wealth upon the former's passing. However, the truth is far from it. The Rockefeller Foundation is said to have gotten most of John's fortune. Do you think that making such generous donations and charitable actions would absolve Rockefeller of his sins? If you like this video, you will surely enjoy our video discussing three of the weirdest monopolies in the world. Check the description for similar videos and bonus content, which will help you to become a modern millionaire.